Aya Ili. I'm Dreaming Fifi of RealElvish.net and I'm going to talk about my life a little and only a little bit about linguistics today. Uh, if you follow my website then you'll know that I was diagnosed with high functioning autism eight months ago. This video will be about that and some of the things and changes I've noticed since then. At first it was really depressing because I was dwelling on all of these things that made my life harder. Things like how I get exhausted going shopping, especially in big department stores. I start feeling tired and nauseous about, or after about 20 minutes in Walmart, for example. When working on projects with other people, I tend to get really nitpicky and inflexible on things. And I think that I can intimidate people or exhaust them and eventually drive them off. I have no sense of time, especially when I'm doing something. That means I'm really bad at keeping appointments. Um, I also have the really typical uh, problems associated with autism. I get overstimulated easy, I have difficulty adapting to change, and I can be really confused or misread social situations and hurt people pretty badly because I didn't read something right. I've, at first, I felt kind of broken, as though all the people who had told me there was something wrong or defective about me were right. Uh, but then I started to think of all the positive things that come with being autistic. Things like how scientific my mind is. I'd never have gotten into linguistics if I didn't need to constantly decode human communication. The obsessions that I have that help me cope. I'm able to help people with them. Uh, a couple of years ago, I helped develop a translation publication tool for my website. People find the name lists and phrase books that I write wrote really helpful too. Um, I'm able to learn languages faster than a lot of people. Perhaps it's because I've always had to approach communicating analytically, but I pick up new languages really quickly. Um, I'm an effective teacher of languages because I have memorized so many more little details than a neurotypical person would ever have picked up on. Um, in college, I did a lot of tutoring of exchange students. My tutoring sessions got to be so popular that uh, people started calling them Fiona's English class. I was able to answer questions that uh, teachers couldn't, things like, how casual speech is structured, how to train yourself to pronounce difficult sounds like the American English R that people find so frustrating, um, how far away to stand from a teacher in class while talking to them, a teacher in their office or a teacher in the hall, and compare that to how close to stand to someone you're uh, dating to make them feel safe and comfortable while also being flirting and caring. I could tell people, or I could tell them things like uh, how to cross busy roads with no traffic light to tell the cars to stop, uh, when it's okay to hug people, when it's expected of you, how to get a word in edgewise, um, when and how you indicate that you've been listening to someone, and when and how you, or when and how to say you're having trouble understanding something. I'm also able to help people understand some of the more really complex tenses that consist of long chains of helping verbs. And one of my most popular topics was how to structure sentences and paragraphs and essays. This is something that's vastly different from culture to culture, by the way, and it was one of the things that people struggled with the most. These are the things that, um, that other people just seem to know and uh, I had to memorize. So if you're coming from uh, other cultures with different rules from uh, like Missoula, Montana, um, from English speakers in Missoula, Montana, um, my mental databases of communication rules are really helpful. Um, another thing I realized is that because of me being autistic, I can achieve a, a state of concentration so intense that I lose contact with most of my body in the outside world. I can do this for hours, usually four or five, but I've gone as long as 20 hours before. Um, coming out of it can really suck though because 
I'll realize suddenly that I haven't eaten or drunk anything all day, that I'm exhausted, really need to use the bathroom, and that I was holding my shoulder at like a really weird angle the entire time, and now it really hurts. <laughs> But it's worth it because I can achieve things that I'm really proud of when I go into a state like this. Um, things that a neurotypical person couldn't do, at least not in this uh, short amount of time. After that, I found that the diagnosis was really helpful, even though I was graduated from college already. Uh, in a weird way, it gave me permission to do certain things that I'd considered abnormal and had tried to suppress. I had no idea that the shaking and rocking I was doing was stimming, but now that I know that, I let myself do it, and it helps me calm down. Uh, I've got a, a special chair for my desk, specifically because I can spin a rock in it. It's like this. Whee! It's very nice. Um, See, I no longer have to hide when I hear, or when I can't hear or understand people who are talking to me. Um, I can't understand people if they're talking at me at once, like everyone's talking at once. Um, uh, and now that I have this diagnosis, I feel like I have permission to interrupt people and say that I can't understand what's being said, and that's been really helpful. A uh, lot fewer misunderstandings when you can ask for clarification more easily. And I can also tell people when I'm overstimulated or when I'm scheduling things um, because I know how to sp I know to spread them out more so that I don't end up wrecking my mental health trying to do too many social things at once or too close together. Um, I can also tell um, let's see. I've developed strategies for dealing with department stores so that I don't get so sick and tired when I have to go to them. And that's made life a lot easier because I don't have to dread shopping so much. Um, I use DS um, or my cell phone, like playing uh, Phoenix Wright and stuff. Even though I've already played the games before, it, you know, it's just something to focus on and not feel so seasick. <laughs> um, another thing that has been really helpful is that it gave me permission to work on publishing my Neo Scene Dream textbook. The progress is about halfway done at the moment. Um, because of the diagnosis and the recommendation of the psychologist, I got into a vocational rehab, which is uh, helping me self-publish my book. When I tried having a normal job last year, I found myself uh, resenting it because it took so much time away from working on my obsession. So I've decided to make my obsession my job. Um, when my book is available for sale, I will be posting about it all, all over the place. So buy it, please. Um, after uh, posting about all this on my website, I've been contacted by a bunch of autistic people who are also Tolkien obsessed, and that's made me feel really at home in my fandom. Um, there's something about knowing that what you experience isn't so unique that makes dealing with these things less isolating, so it's been really nice. Um, I'll finish off this little video with a personal recommendation. If you think you might be on the autism spectrum, you should get yourself tested, even if you're an adult. I was 29 um, when I was diagnosed. Um, this will, er, it's made things a lot easier for me in ways I didn't really expect, and I had dragged my feet on this for a very long time because um, I thought, hey, what's the use? What, what, what could it possibly give me? And turns out, it's helped. So, um, it may make things easier for you that you, in ways you might not expect. Anyways. Mariana.